Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Badger. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my Vevictus Easter egg guide. This is basically transit outbreak for Black Ops 3. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, so the first step is you have to get to round 3. But before we get to round 3, we're going to build the scavenger. The scavenger is super good in this map and really worth it. Come over to Call of Dead in the lighthouse and you're going to see this tree. It'll have a number ingrained on it. Remember that number. Remember that color. It's basically where Speed Cola would be. Come over to the second, like, kind of height area of the lighthouse. And you're going to see by the front entrance, there's going to be this rock pallet over here. This is where your second number and color is going to be. Next, basically head straight down from where you just were, and then you're gonna drop down to where the MP5 wall by would be on Call of the Dead. In that cavern, you're gonna see your final number and color. Next, you can input these codes in any way, shape, or form. You just need to make sure the colors are correct and the numbers are correct. The very top of the lighthouse is where the orange dial is going to be. The green dial is the third floor, and the blue dial is the second floor. And then once you've completed it, it'll say scavenger hunt. You're going to get a couple points and you're going to get a couple XP things. And then basically you're going to need to get a key from a zombie drop. Now this key can drop literally any time, but for me it dropped when I was doing the holdout on my first objective. Speaking of your objective, go ahead and do that. I would actually recommend keeping the M1911 for the first round. You don't really need to grab another gun unless it's a holdout or if it's a eliminate challenge. If you have retrieve, you can easily do it with just the M1911 because the M1911 is a two shot to the head on this round once you've completed your objective hopefully you grabbed a key this is where my key dropped was right here if you get gersh devices i would recommend just using them right away they are so insanely good in this map it's actually kind of op next make your way to your beacon grab your riot shield grab your perks if you're grabbing the scavenger grab phd stamina up and jug if you don't have the scavenger quite yet just grab stamina up jug and double tap if you do have your key come to where the characters are trapped and call the dead and pick up your scavenger for the next step you're gonna have to do your objective but if you do get this challenge for town and the bar is locked or the bowling alley whatever it is you can jump across using your parachute if you can't zip line over just a little tip i would recommend grabbing speed cola and double tap as your other perks and then go ahead to round three then round three you need to complete your objective but do not teleport once you've completed it now we can actually start doing the easter egg next the uh like goddess or one of the characters will say something about using the lighthouse for the beam of light go straight to the diner fling grenade is going to be your best friend for this they're so helpful throw them straight up in the air and you can just fly anywhere in the map go ahead and go over to the diner once you head inside you'll see it on the table the summoning key or some i think it's the summoning key is gonna be sitting right there next head over to nuketown once you're at nuketown go to where the uh like drop would be behind the door and you can pick up the artifact and this is the real device go ahead and then travel to round four and then the characters are going to say some about shooting down a meteorite you're going to need to go to this rail gun in the area 51 kind of base it's very easy to spot it's a very big gun and you're going to go up to it and interact with it and shoot down a meteorite next once it's shot down and it says investigate go to town and remove ted from the bus and then you're going to go up to the big mpd in the middle and you're going to place ted there ted's head will start rising your screen's going to flash white and then you have to survive this little lockdown you're going to get a panzer you're gonna get a mangler you're gonna get all sorts of enemies so just make sure you are prepared for this the jet gun is very easy to get from the box i only had to hit it a couple times to get it from the box in both of the games i have played on this map so it's not really that that rare i would recommend getting it before this like lockdown and then the characters are basically going to keep talking and then it'll allow you to board the bus go to the next round so you should be on round five by this time you should have all of your perks and at least two guns upgraded once i was able to get my guns upgraded twice but that's not gonna be the same for you guys every game next head over to nuketown and you're gonna see this forest next to it you're gonna see these trees with faces on them you are going to need to fill up every single one of these trees faces until it spawns a golden branch once it spawns the golden branch you can go ahead and pick that up and you are done with this step gersh devices and phd slider are going to be your best friends for this phd slider kills infinitely so you can just keep sliding into zombies and it has a pretty good range of effect that it can actually take out a good chunk of them and here's here is also another tip if you have a fling grenade throw yourself all the way into the air pull out your parachute and then use your jet gun while looking straight up and you can actually fly across the map like it is it is insane how far you can go i went all the way from nuketown all the way across the map to the transit bridge which is where our next step is going to take place kill a couple zombies until you get a gersh device or a monkey bomb and then look up at this ether shard you're going to shoot it it'll drop and you need to catch it right away it is in the middle of the bridge very hard to miss next head over to the green pond outside the lighthouse and it'll say hold interact to assemble spear 
Just it needs just a couple kills and then it'll be filled. You are going to need to take this spear, but this spear does take up a weapon slot. So hopefully you have another gun that you're not using. This is why I recommend meal kick. You're gonna go ahead and take that spear. I replaced my executioners while keeping the jet gun and the scavenger. And this is my setup that I really liked and I think is probably the best setup for this Easter egg. Next, head over to the Call of the Dead lighthouse, and on the bottom floor, you're gonna see this generator thing. Keep spamming your spear until your screen shakes, and then also if you hit your reload with the spear while it's like been thrown it'll explode and that's how you actually use the sphere and then it'll say hold f to ascend and you're gonna hit that and then you'll be transported to another area once you're here you're gonna go to either side of these little like console things you're gonna place ted's head down at one and then once he's done it'll allow you to pick up his head again pick that back up and then repeat on the other side. This will then throw you into a cutscene. I'm gonna let this play out, but if you don't wanna see it, skip ahead to this timestamp. Once here, you're gonna go up to like the middle ground where it has the objective and you're gonna place Ted in there. Then drop down and head over to the Simon Says machine. I'm not sure if it's the same every time, left to right, but my code was red, green, blue, yellow. Yours could be different, yours could be the same, but just go ahead and complete Simon Says. Once you're done with that, go ahead and merge the data. A wave of zombies will spawn in, so just make sure you're ready for that. And then you need to start turning valves after the characters are done talking until they are green. These are all the locations for them. First couple are going to be along the wall and there's multiple spots that you can actually turn the wheel for it to be green and then just remember you are also on a timer for this so you're going to have three against this back wall you're going to have one on this tube and then head back into where you came from and then you're going to see one basically right in the middle where you enter on the right hand side of the wall on the opposite side of the room there's going to be another valve in front of that valve on that same wall is going to be another one and then opposite that one on the other side of the room there's also going to be another valve this will be your final valve and then just one more time you're gonna merge the data and there will be another wave of zombies survive this and then you're gonna have a tempest spawn in keep this tempest alive because this part you do need the tempest for you're gonna see this like glowing pipe along the generator on the right hand side of the room and you are going to need to turn the dial on the generator to conduct the charge throughout every generator and then if it has this blue orb around it you'll not be able to turn it you need the tempest to shoot the generator and it'll actually conduct the charge for you that way just keep repeating this until you are finally done and every single pipe is lit up basically then some dialogue will play and the librarian will go bye bye someone will overtake him and then he says minions destroy them as soon as you hear that make your way to the teleporter where you came in from and then you'll be teleported to area 51 pack a punch this is where i recommend upgrading your jet gun to level two and then your scavenger to level two as well before we go on with the next step it just makes everything so much easier next you can choose to keep playing the map or you can continue the quest to continue the map you're just gonna click on the normal like teleport thing that would take you to another round to complete the easter egg interact with ted once you do that if you chose to interact with ted head over to the objective and place artemis after a couple seconds of dialogue it's gonna spawn in basically a civil protector klaus whatever you want to call him but it's going to be ted and he will follow you around the map next head over to behind the locked door at bus depot and wait a couple seconds till the uh, dialogue's done and a nav card will spawn in for you to pick up next head over to the buried church and you will see the nav card on a graveyard of arthur then head over to the middle of the map near town and you'll see the diarized dragon go up the staircase and grab the nav card from his mouth and then you are on to the boss fight once the boss fight spawns in it'll be this big old portal go ahead and interact with it after a little bit this name will pop up and this is when the boss fight actually starts you're going to need to wait a couple seconds by this left hand door and after a little bit it'll finally open revealing skulls in that room and then go ahead and pick one up and you're going to see the yellow orb again it'll be literally anywhere within this room most common spots are right behind the agamemnon like kind of boss head thing there'll be another one underneath the stairs 
And then once you grab the third skull, he's going to start shooting a laser at you, so just keep dodging that. It doesn't really do too much damage, and it's pretty easy to dodge. But head all the way across, and then your third one is going to be on the opposite side of the first one. And go ahead and grab your final skull, and it's going to be in that same room above the doorway. Now his health bar is going to turn red, and now you can start to damage him. This is why we have the scavenger and the spear. Both are very, very good against him. The scavenger is going to do a little bit more damage, but it's going to be a lot slower, whereas the spear is going to be faster and do a little bit less damage. And then once you've completed this first phase of the boss fight, your screen will flash, and you're on to phase two. And then essentially the same as the other part, you're going to have to wait for the right side door to come down. You're going to activate, the barrier will go up, and a mangler is going to spawn in with the scavenger he is very easy to take out once you've done that take his cannon that'll fall off his arm the barrier will go down and then directly outside you're gonna be able to place it and then his health bar is going to go red again go ahead and start shooting it until that is depleted i did forget to mention earlier that there will be a carpenter and a max ammo at the end of every phase so make sure you are grabbing that at the end of every phase next the final phase the back door will open and then there's going to be two boss zombies that are going to spawn there's going to be a tempest and another man Angler. I activated a ring of fire and this was so mind-numbingly easy with the scavenger. Took two shots to kill the mangler and took one shot to kill the tempest. Make sure you guys stay in this area after you kill both of them because the like laser eye thing will start to go haywire and I'm not sure if it'll insta down you but I didn't really want to find out and basically this laser is just gonna go crazy and then you're gonna see his health bar slowly deteriorating and quickly deteriorating and then that is the boss fight done. You're not done with the easter egg yet though. After a ton of dialogue head over to expose the portal and then basically we're just going to unload into it after the characters are done talking you have infinite ammo so just go crazy on the orb your screen will keep going white and your like audio is going to fade just keep shooting until your screen is completely white and now the easter egg is done and now you have the cutscene oh let play out their lives as the depths of the dark ether swallowed them whole taking a great force of malice and death along with them their faces did not show regret or remorse. Rather, they told of an unfettered determination, the likes of which is only seen in humankind. An inability to give up, roll over, and let evil win, no matter the odds they seem to face. Against all of our calculations, they managed to keep the false parasite King Agamemnon from regaining a foothold in this realm, even after how powerful he had become. While the future of the Dark Aether from here forward is uncertain, there is one thing we have learned for sure. In a world of demons and gods, the greatest unknown factor is humanity and their capacity for both good and evil. If you did enjoy this guide and it helped you out, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment, anything to help me out, that'd be greatly appreciated, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.